Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the editor in chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Fraunhofer with Roland Yanka, who's going to talk today about reliability in automotive chips. Roland, we've been used to thinking about automotive chips as something you design and then it's you simulate it and it should be good for 18 years. Does that always work? No, unfortunately not. We need to really understand, especially for the latest uh, technologies, we need to understand what are the usage conditions for a certain chip in order that we really design a chip for the mission profile that it will see in the field. So why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. So Roland, what does the term mission profile actually mean in, in relation to automotive chips? Well, it's easy to explain. Let's have a look at a certain parameter, say, temperature. Um, an automotive always um, say it has to last for a certain automotive grade from, say, minus 40 degrees up until plus 125 degrees. But no one can really afford to design a chip that will last for the whole um, lifetime within the whole span of this parameter. So what we need to understand is how long will the chip, in terms of this temperature, um, stay in which range. And this is an example of a certain mission profile. But you don't have to do this for every chip that's going to be used in an automobile, right? This is only for the ones that say, um, it's going to be controlling a critical function, or is it all of them? We need to actually, we need to understand this for all the chips, but there are different mission profiles for different chips. So we have to understand which classes of chips will go where in the car and what are the mission profiles in which area of the car. Some of these chips are coming in at the latest process now. As you think about the AI logic that's going into some of the advanced driving systems and autonomous vehicles eventually, those are going to be run at the latest process nodes. There's no data on how long those are going to last, right? Right. That's, easy. that's actually an issue. We need to understand for the latest technology, for the most advanced technology nodes, um, what are they really capable of? We need to um, more qualify those technologies and understand what they are really, what can they really be used for and what not. So how do we build these profiles? Is it just as simple as uh, computational? This is, we know this is going to be used for this under these conditions and this is the kind of data that we have and simulated or is it something different? This is something which will come in the near future as a standard. Or this is what we're um, expecting. There will be different mission profiles, will be standardized, and we need to describe them really as a requirement for a certain design project. There's been talk about using some chips that were designed for consumer electronics in a car, but the problem is that sometimes there's failovers that are being used uh, for those types of systems. There's also much more stress on these designs than the consumer chips were designed for. Plus, there's also these cars are expected to be on the road for what, 18, 20 years sometimes? How does, how does that crossover work and can it actually work? Right, that's actually an important question. Um, there need to be differentiated um, what were these chips designed for and what they will be used for. And if you have consumer electronics, you need to requalify them for automotive. You may step down with the frequency, you may um, sort out by testing certain devices, but you really have to cope for the automotive requirements and see which of your designs or which of your chips are really capable of withstanding these automotive requirements. You also have to think about designing for different regions. So a car that's being used in the desert, for example, is going to have a completely different uh, use case than one that's used in, the, in a, uh, Fairbanks, Alaska, for example. Actually, this might come in the future as we are approaching the technological limits in the, in the near future. We might also think about different regions and different designs for different regions in the world. And also when you're designing these chips, they tend to drift over time as well. So you think about a sensor, for example, that's used in one of these systems. The output of these chips may not be the same five years from now as when it's initially designed. How do you account for that in these mission profiles? Well, um, we need to cope also with degradation over time. So we have to um, 
uh, track the quality of the data that gets that we get from the sensors, and we need to understand um, what is the quality of the data that we can get out of the sensors. Um, we might do this with different sensors at the same time. On the other hand, redundancy is always a cost factor, so we really need to have innovative approaches here. A lot of this is brand new applications for these designs. We don't have the, the benefit of years of data uh, of this stuff being used out in the field because it's all brand new. What happens there? Right, we also have to think about uh, where, we, where do we get test data from in order to qualify our sensors. So this is again a question where we can um, bring in simulation. If we have simulation models, then we can um, see that the sensor really does what he's expected to do and that he really will cope with the data that he gets as an artificial data so far. There's been a move in the, on the part of a lot of automakers to both centralize the data processing and also decentralize it, and I think they're back to centralizing it again. What impact does that have on any of these systems and how they're being profiled? Do they change over time and does that affect what happens here? The EE architecture in cars is very much debated. Where will the uh, story go? Where, uh, what is the next technology roadmap here? Um, what we see here is that it goes to a domain controllers. So for different domains in the car, there will be different controllers um, and they will have to be designed with respect to their security um, requirements, with their application requirements. So there might be different controllers for different uh, domains in the car. Another issue has always been about reuse. Do we have to design these chips differently in terms of this is going to be very specific for this case or can we now reuse a lot of the technology over and over again? Because you have a mission profile for these chips, does that mean they're all 100% unique? No, definitely not. So we will see um, certain modularity of those chips, so certain um, parts of the design can be reused other parts need to be redesigned for this application, for this mission profile that they are used for. That also helps in terms of meeting the criteria for minus 40 to 175, right? Because you have parts that have been tested in the field, you know they're going to work, and if you reuse those, those components, at least you get some partial understanding about how this is going to perform. Exactly. Yeah. This is, um, if you have field data that you can use for certain components, you're sure that this one will meet the requirements. Others need to be um, re-qualified and joined to the already existing parts of the design. Roland Yanka, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.